The opening begins with a padding shot over the bed to reveal our sleeping protagonist. After a few seconds, we cut to a close-up of the, her face to bring the audience in and familiarise them with her. We use the light ray effect on this shot to connote that we are entering her mind, and this effect carries over to the next shot, clearly linking between the reality and the dream world. Here we have our first title, and throughout our sequence we integrate short, sharp clips of Holly asleep, showing distress at events during the dream, which become more frequent as music gets tenser and the plot unfolds. To show that she's dreaming, we use a custom CPU effect on all dream shots, and this is because CPU is industry standard to show a flashback or a dream. During the scene where Holly tries to persuade Jed to take the shortcut, we have a shot reverse shot. The difficulty was that we didn't have both Jed and Holly at the same time. So we used the shot reverse shot as if we didn't have to show Jed and Holly in the scene at the same time. We used the crane and tracking equipment throughout the shoot to try and make our film look as professional as possible. During the journey to school, we made sure that Holly was always walking ahead of Jed. We did this to portray Holly's lack of responsibility and to show that she didn't really care for her brother's safety. The close-up of the ball is important for our story as the ball is a key prop, as it is part of Jed's death. The close-up of him kicking the ball tells the audience that this is a key event for the story and an important detail and is therefore drawing their attention to it. These cutaways, a form of parallel editing, were also used to speed up time progression to move through the events faster. The scene where the antagonist stops the ball is vital to the opening as it has a huge sense of suspense. We were actually inspired by Fritz Lang's M for that shot. The next shot was of the murder weapon, a bloodstained rock. This was important as it insinuated that an attack had happened. Until this point, the music had been building up slowly, but as the ball stopped, it spikes and changes to a quiet, dark acoustic beat, so that when Holly speaks, it's possible to hear her. As Holly starts to run, we overlaid a faded image of her face to show her distress while dreaming. We then cut to a POV shot so as to help the audience feel like they're in the film and to increase the suspense. We see Jed's face with blood on it, which is the first clear shot of him after being killed. She crouches over him to show that she is shocked and horrified by his death and the accident. The next sequence is of Holly pulling her phone out of the bag. In order to show panic and fear, we use five different angles of her doing this, in order to cause disorientation and confusion for the audience so they know how she feels. This finishes with a long shot of her lowering her phone while gazing into the distance, and this gives the audience the fear of the unknown, as we don't know what she has seen. The camera cuts to an extreme long shot of a character running away and because of Holly's initial expression, we know that this is the killer. The scene switches to Holly waking up suddenly, we fade the music and this connoted a fading dream and her gasp shows that she is traumatised by it. She falls back and the scene fades at which the rest of the film would follow.